All right, Mr. Chennai, if you could tell us about the existing projects of NSDC. So, NSDC is running uh, three types of different programs. The first is that we're promoting the setting up of scalable, sustainable, skill developer institutions by providing a soft loan of up to 75% of the project cost linked to annual outcomes uh, at a 6% interest rate, three to four year monitoriums, 10 year repayment period. So we have so far approved 205 partners. We are looking at adding another 115 uh, in the remaining part of this year. Mm -hmm. The objective of these entities that we fund uh, is to scale a specified number of people every year. Uh, last year, the NSDC ecosystem scaled 34 lakh people. This year, our target is 60.6 lakhs. And in built in that is a second program which is known as the Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana, where we are giving a monetary reward to students who join a skill development program that is aligned to the National Skills Qualification Framework and is, does the training to a qualification pack and the certification is by a sector skill council. So any student who, pays such a, who, who joins such a program and pays the fees on successful completion depending on the level is level one and two in services get 7500 rupees as reward please understand he has to pay the fees right. and then he gets the reward or 10000 rupees or 12500 rupees depending on the services or manufacturing mm. the student can also opt to use the reward to pay its fees but the idea is to get people to pay fees in a skill development program and get a certificate that is recognized by the employer and is aligned to the National Skills Qualification Framework. The other thing that we do is that we are promoting employers to come together to create these sector skill councils. We have approved 37 till date. We're looking at a new seven more this year. For example, we're looking at one in strategic manufacturing. We're looking at one in furniture and furnishings. Mm -hmm. So new sectors like this, there's a debate about culture uh, sector skill council domestic workers uh, sector skill council All right. so this and then uh, we run a call center where you can get information on s skills uh, availability we also would be taking india's participation in the world skills competition in sao paulo we participate in the oceania uh, competition and there we won one gold two silvers and three bronze medals we won the gold in beauty and wellness and silver in uh, gems and jewelry and automobile technology. And uh, we've got the bronzes in tile and bricklaying. So this is the objective that we have. Right. We also want to expand the partnership with universities. We run uh, skill add-on courses in universities. And we also have a partnership with state school boards in introducing uh, vocational training in class 9, 10, 11, and 12, mm -hmm. and with AICTE and the UGC to run the BWOC programs. So it's really an end-to-end -end effort with employer engagement uh, going forward uh, there. Um, right. We will continue to try and make skills more aspirational, including doing a lot of innovative things uh, like even uh, community band radio, you know, advertisements in newspapers, uh, not advertisements as we know them, but let's say, you know, running matrimonial ads for people who are skilled. So we just want to look at it a bit differently. Right. Uh, if you could tell us more about this matrimonial ad, what is... You know, if you look at, if you look at the matrimonial ads in, 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 in newspapers, mm -hmm. you will never see that a plumber or a driver is looking for a bride. Mm -hmm. You'll always see a graduate or you might see, uh, you, you might find that there might be a particular uh, Maheshwari right. or there might be a Brahmin or a Jain or you know mm -hmm. uh, Sikh or you know someone uh, looking for a, this thing and if the person is not a graduate then the education qualification is not mentioned. So we would like to see people being you know Sikh. chefs have started coming out so right. because it's a good thing you know but other professions, we like to see the profession mentioned in a, in a matrimonial ad so it gains acceptance in society. Right. Uh, that's something which we are looking at uh, there. Um, you know, for example, the person who won, who, the two people who won for, went for uh, bricklaying and for tile uh, in competition, mm -hmm. Tikam Singh actually won a medal there and he's just got married. 
and you know she has become famous he became famous yeah. okay so um, you know just like a sushil kumar and a mary com right. actually helped create wrestling academies uh, haryana is a little more ancient uh, than uh, sushil kumar but mary com you have mm-hmm. the boxing academies come up in the northeast and you're seeing all of that happen so we want this to be aspirational also and similarly young parents and young children look to it as a career and they and the best part something which has happened very innocently and very quietly is today if you have done a language and you've done your subjects so supposing you want to get entry into delhi university and you want to take up history honors so you've done history in your school and you've done a language and if you've done two vocational courses right it could be a course in tourism or it could be some other vocational you can actually club those marks and uh, let them be used as a best of four so even now universities are giving acceptance to vocational courses and now of course they're discounting it by 2.5% but going forward and the discount goes then you know the whole vocational and skill space will get integrated with the economy and integrated with the education system great if you could uh, share with us few figures from the nsdc point of view for example we have a british council saying by the year 2025 75% of uh, uh, profession would be skill based jobs would be skill based so any such figures wherein that so, states so if you look at uh, if you look at uh, uh, the way uh, skills are defined 100% of your jobs will be skill based because even teaching is a skill right so there's no job which does not have a skill right if you look at the studies that nsdc has done across 24 sectors mm-hmm. we are finding that 104 million people will be required across these 24 sectors and one of the challenges there is because the agriculture sector is actually going to see a decline of the number of people that are engaged in agriculture but you're going to see the skills in agriculture change more mechanization more rotation of crops uh, new methods of farming new methods of uh, new new ways of you know you might find organic farming taking off right. you might have rooftop farming like you has happening in kerala take off because land will be at a premium mm-hmm. so this 109 million jobs over the next 8 uh, years is something what you had looked at but the second most important thing is that at least 40% of the people within a specified age group mm-hmm. who are working in sectors where their jobs would be at stake uh, to give you a very interesting example is that last year india stopped the telegraph service so telegraph operators have now become extinct right so similarly there are other professions that will be overrun by technology Uh, the other thing is that when you used to call a call center earlier they used to ask you someone used to pick up the phone say you want to speak in english or hindi or which language mm-hmm. now that is done through a ivr system right. so that job is gone it is anticipated that because of you know technology interpreters cashiers uh, you know they might not have jobs in the future uh, so how do you actually then take those people who have who are in these jobs and then uh, get them Uh, retrained and some of them may be in their 40s and you know 50s uh, you might have to retrain and upskill them uh, you know going forward so you know cleaners may be replaced by robots we don't know but that's that's something which the future skills uh, program will actually come out with right what's your thought on uh, private equity on the technical and vocational education a full fledged funding um so if you look at uh, the nsdc partners as an example we are finding about 10% uh, of the partners that we funded in have actually got second round funding of equity uh, initially no one believed in the sustainability and scalability and profitability of vocational training organizations uh, in the education space of course k to 12 and colleges there are different uh, challenges there but even there they are finding equity we believe that um, as technology comes in uh, and technology is going to play a greater role is very interesting require skills for technology and there'll be technology for skills and going forward you will find a lot of companies who are actually finding innovative solutions to provide skills 
using technology will find whole lot of venture capital following them because that's and you require a huge new sets you need new ways to deliver education you need new ways of cur uh, curriculum you'll see gamification uh, increasing uh, you would see assessment models changing you would see skills marketplaces being created all this will require venture capital the whole skills ecosystem will see a lot of uh, venture capital uh, coming in the only danger is that government funding might crowd this out so the government will have to actually run a very nice balance between what you know subsidy that give to entities and how they will allow mm -hmm. the market to develop and how do we make sure that the motive is not diluted with the private equity funding you know it is not necessarily that all private equity funding is bad uh, and if uh, the private equity comes in with a short term perspective it's not going to happen in the vocational space because you know a vocational entity takes about 4 to 5 years to break even and then it starts scaling right uh, if you compress the break even then you are you are actually compromising on scale and quality mm -hmm. so i think initially some venture capital companies may look at compressing and you know uh getting huge uh, mm -hmm. outcomes and then withdrawing but that perhaps may not be the right approach in the sector but of course the venture capitalists know it best uh and they will decide it but the challenge is how do you actually enable uh, that to happen in a sustainable manner you will have long term see you will have two types of people in this space one is the small startup funding entities because the amount of money is not large the second is you'll have second round and third round funders where you'll have larger amounts coming in who will cherry pick and you know uh, go around mm -hmm. and you're going to have a, get, get a few fair amount of companies who are going to need turn around so turn around and those type of entities will also be required great anything else you would like to add the biggest role of nsdc is is trying to create and address the information uh, disconnect what are the skills that are required by industrial skill gap sectors mm -hmm. what are the spatial requirements of skills so the skill uh, district level skill gap studies mm -hmm. what are the qualifications most sought after by industry so the qualification packs what is what are the numbers that industry is looking for the skill gap sectors mm -hmm. there and how does the student connect So we've taken one of the biggest Indian innovations was a miss call and created a miss call number so it's 0880055555 where you give a missed call then you get call back and we answer your questions as to where we would like to get skilled what are the opportunities what are the programs and we are trying to connect all government programs to this so it's 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 the missed call number which we talk about which is 0880055555 and uh, it's supported by a rural call center so we're actually trying to create employment mm -hmm. in rural india that's excellent